She said, two, he's around, not bitter, no. And it's a strange microphone. It picks things up and it, and it should pick loads of things up, but it just picks some things up. But the thing I wanted it to pick up, it picks up. So it pick. <laughs> Look, the power you're spending on compute, yeah. Oh. It would really make a difference to the architecture. It's brute force at the moment. So I'm going to read up on it. No, because there's no point in me just criticizing something I don't understand. There we go. Security issues. I mean, would it be? Here's the test. Can the model tell me about it? I mean, it's the best way to ask. Like, maybe it is. I don't know, but I have specific questions. I need to generalize notions, so I don't know. Maybe I should read the Google page or a model of fuck. Essential mechanism for sequence transduction tasks. Right. Brilliant. So, um, you can tell me what that is. They're based on re complex recurrent or convolutional neural network. Did you call this a greedy search? I mean, it must have been a human. The most interesting answer to me is not that it's task specificity, but that it's the numerical stability and precision and that's that mathematical computations often require high numerical stability and precision to ensure written results. Uh, so sequence transduction models, especially deep neural networks, can suffer from numerical instability and limited precision due to the use of floating point arithmetic and the accumulation of errors, drawing, training, and inference. This can lead to inaccuracies and complex mistakes. <laughs> Suffering from numerical instability and in the and due to use floating point arithmetic and accumulation of errors during training and errors. How much are you spending on training this? Well, you want to think about limitations, right? Some of them, you know, like, well, there's limited precision, isn't there? And, and then there are errors. And it's not as simple as it looks, is it? But like, how that happens. It's an IEE -E standard, isn't it?
I think it is. But I want to know what it is, where the errors occur. Is it just outside of its range? And the precision is... So it's got, you know, it's all about rounding, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's one thing. Well, it's telling me five rounding rules. The first two rules round to the nearest value, the other are called directed rounding. Round to the nearest ties to even, round to the nearest ties away from zero. Round to nearest ties to away is only required for decimal. And then the directed ones around towards zero, also known as truncation. And then, you know, ceiling or floor, which is brilliant because I know something about that, like clamping. Anyway. So, 11.5 would be 12, 12, 11, 12, or 11. 12.5 could be 12, 13, 12, 13, or 12. Minus 11.5 could be minus 12, minus 12, minus 11, minus 11, minus 12. <laughs> minus 12.5, this is going to be all minus 12 or 13, isn't it? So unless specified otherwise, the floating point result of an operation is determined by applying the rounding function function on the infinitely precise mathematical result. Such an operation is said to be correctly rounded. All right, of course, and here this isn't interesting, is it? Because as an exception in its underflow. And that is that a result is very small outside the normal range. By default, returns a number less than or equal to the minimum positive normal number in magnitude. Following the rounding rules, a subnormal number implies always implies an underflow exception, but by exact, if it is exact, no flag is raised. By default, if it is exact. In exact, the exact, i.e. unrounded result is not representable easily. By that default, Returns the correctly rounded result. Some decimal floating implications of define additional exceptions, which are not part of the IEEE seven five four standard. Clamped. A results exponent is too large for the destination format. By default, trailing zeros will be added to the coefficient to reduce the exponent to the largest usable value. If this is not possible, because this will cause the number of digits needed to be more than the destination format, and then the overflow exception occurs. Well, we're thinking in terms of ranges and clamping in ranges because some, some in code interpreters, right, if you don't clamp to the range, it will just go off the scale but a bit odd to me that we're seeing this happen like people are getting computers more powerful computers and they understand them less and less but it is like you don't really understand them anyway like even if you do you don't right but you do have insight but But th this fundamental, right? 
even in the most advanced things. That's that's interesting. Did, did you tell? Are you hallucinating that you already know this? Someone's eating my bollocks. By the way, it's round dinner time, isn't it? Why are you eating my bollocks? I'm giving you something very useful, yeah, already. Right, so it thinks it's a promising approach, what I've asked, to mitigate errors caused by floating point arithmetic and ac accumulated errors during training and inf inference. Gradient clipping. These are its other suggestions, right? And they they might be better, you know, more sort of within the specificity of the task, right? Um, gradient clipping. Weight regularization. I mean, obviously. <laughs> careful initialization it's funny you should say that so using appropriate initialization strategies for model weights to avoid starting in regions prone to in instability well more of it is everything. <laughs> Lower precision training, and I mean, I get it, that it helps your computer. But it's almost like, well, you've got this really high resolution image and you just shrunk it, but there's something else already generated the image. Well, I like, know, oh, I'm just saying training. Um, yeah. Yeah. Shall I say it out loud? Sure, it's fucking too. <laughs> well, I don't think the its idea promises the same as mine, but but.
I mean, it's saying that the the different natures of problems, right? So population stability models, he's already got me wrong because that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that's an example. Often deal with cyclical patterns and equilibrium states, which can be effectively represented using complex periodicities. Sequence transduction, on the other hand, focuses on mapping variable length input sequences to output sequences involving complex nonlinear relationships and dependencies. Um, but here it's saying the property of complex periodicity is also known as robustness to noise or instabilities in <laughs> numerical computations is indeed a promising approach <laughs> to mitigate errors caused by floating point arithmetic and accumulated errors during training. Fuck you. And it's given me some brilliant ideas. 